All right, section 1.6, we're going to have miscellaneous equations. So some of them will feel like, in fact, many of them will feel like a lot of the techniques that we just did in section 1.5, but they're not technically quadratic equations. We'll use a lot of the same techniques to solve them. So here's an example of one. These um, involve radicals, okay? So the problem itself has a radical in it. We didn't have that happen last section. Um, However, we did have places where we introduced radicals, right? We, we sort of put the radicals in to eliminate a square, right? We square rooted to eliminate a square. Well, we can do the same thing in reverse to eliminate a square root. So if I square rooted to eliminate a square, what would I do to eliminate a square root? I'll square. So I'm going to square both sides of the equation, and now you do need to be a little bit careful. The left-hand side, the square root and the square cancel, leaving me with x minus 1. But on the right-hand side, you can't just give me x squared minus 49 or x squared plus 49. You don't get to just square individual pieces. You have to square all of it, which means you'd have to multiply x minus 7 times x minus 7. Okay? So what is x minus 7 times x minus 7? I'll start you out. x squared. What's next? Minus You're right. It's minus 14x. Drew, you want to tell me the rest? Plus 49. Plus 49. Thank you. Perfect. Now, the cool thing is that aside from the fact that the problem didn't quite start out looking like quadratic, now it does. Right? Mm -hmm. It does. So now I've got the same techniques that I had back in the last section. I'm going to move my negative or move my x to the left from the left and the 1 from the left. So I have 0 equals x squared minus 15x plus 50. And there are three basic forms that we found out last section that we can use to solve a quadratic equation. Factoring, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. Factoring doesn't always work. Completing the square and quadratic formula do. But when factoring does work, it's the easiest one, right? So we tend to sort of start there and see, does it factor before we try something that's more you know, universally powerful because it's also more difficult. So this one will, in fact, factor. Do you see how it factors? Got my x's. What are my signs? Negative 5 and negative 10. Oh, you got the whole bit. That's right. They are negative 5 and negative 10. So it'll give me a positive 50 at the end and negative 15x in the middle. Okay, just like early on in the lesson last section, we're going to set each of those equal to zero and solve. So I have x equals 5 and x equals 10. Here's the caveat. Yes, the problem became quadratic, and yes, I can use all my techniques for quadratic, but sometimes when that happens, I introduce things that are not really solutions for the problem that I started with. So you absolutely have to check those answers back in the original problem. Oftentimes, at least one of them's not gonna work. So let me show you what I mean. So we've got x equal five. So if I have the square root of five minus one, the question is, does that actually equal five minus seven? It doesn't work, right? It just doesn't. On the left-hand side, I get the square root of 4, which is 2. But on the right-hand side, what do I get? Negative 2. So this one does not work. So this solution is really not a solution. It has a name. It's called an extraneous solution. I need to check the other one, though, too, because it could, or it also still might not, so I have the square root of 10 minus 1. And the question is, does that equal 10 minus 7? That one works, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So this is the square root of 9 is 3. And this one gives me 3. So this one checks out. So why did that happen? Well, it happened because what would happen in this problem if I did square both of these? You get 4. So when I square things, signs sometimes change, don't they? I mean, they don't always. Down here, the squaring doesn't really 
change the signs. So that's why extraneous solutions sort of pop up in these problems, is that sometimes our methods for solving introduce ideas that aren't actually accurate to the original problem. Okay? So we'll continue in section 1.6 next time. Have a lovely week, and I'll see you guys all on Wednesday.